another Jaltus Marine webinar. This one is going to be about Cummins, another great brand. Uh, we initially did Volvo Penta, one of these series talking just about one brand was Volvo Penta, Mercury, and right now it is going to be Cummins. I'm going to divide this in, in three parts. It's going to be introduction, um, comments, and then some additional information. First thing, introduction, who we are, you know, where we are, why we are talking about comments. It's going to be very short. First thing, Kajali Group, uh, we're from Spain. Um, we have just done our 30 years anniversary. Um, we have anyway um, subsidiaries and commercial offices around the world and we sell pretty much everywhere. We're a company of technology. We have different business lines. We started and we still do it. We manufacture parts uh, for especially for the commercial vehicle side, ag of highway, some for the marine. Uh, we get into the electronic side, a Riemann, a Jaltus Diagnostics 20 years ago. Uh, today we're going to talk about Jaltus Marine and then telematics and remote diagnostics. That's uh, quite new. We have been working on that for several years, uh, but um, we have um, been in the market um, like two, two years ago, more or less, on that side. Training is also very important. As you can see, we have here a building uh, that's dedicated only to uh, um, training and education. Well, we have Kajali and Jaltes, et cetera. As I say, we're pretty much everywhere. Um, although our headquarters is in Spain, we have been with our own office and company, independent company in the US and Miami, Florida. Um, and then we have others once, in, for example, in Italy, France, and we have other all commercial offices around the world. We're able to be pretty much everywhere because we have agreements with our distributors uh, around the world. Uh, we have four different Jaltes kits, uh, commercial vehicle, ag of highway and marine. Uh, and very soon we're going to release another one called material handling equipment. Let's talk about marine. Uh, what is Jaltes? What is Jaltes Marine? It's a global solution for all nautical workshops. Uh, everybody that's involved in the maintenance side, it's a potential customer, a potential user. It's very important because Jotis is four parts, although the most important side is the advanced diagnostics, you know, dealer level functionalities. We have technical information within the software, um, the GRP, which is the management tool, and customer support. So Jotis is those four uh, parts, and we're going to talk about, you know, the four of them. We have four different models in five different configurations. Okay? We have Inboards, outboards, jet skis, and stationary engines. Um, Cummins, obviously, purely diesel, it's on you know, the inboard and stationary engine side. And we have different configurations, okay? We have the full software kit, which is all these four models. We have the boat kit, which is inboard plus outboard. And then we have just inboard, just outboard, just jet ski. So for example, for Cummins user, if you're just working on diesels, for example, and you want to work on inboards and stationaries, you would need to get into the full software kit. Okay, so let's get uh, here straight to the point comments. Uh, I'm going to divide this in three parts. It's going to be inboard, a smart craft, okay, although it's not manufactured by Cummins, they use it on their vessels. Um, for all those peripheral systems and then stationary engines. Let's start with inboard, which obviously is diesel. Uh, Cummins, it's one of the world leaders on the diesel side, not only marine, you know, they're pretty much in anything that you find a diesel engine. Uh, in our case, jaw test, you know, it's part of the commercial vehicle, ag of highway, and obviously marine. They used to have a joint venture with Mercruiser, with Mercury, and it, it was called Cummins Mercruiser Diesel or CMD. We cover it, okay? They don't have that joint venture anymore, but they still purchase their smartcraft technology, for example, for the DTS, you know, the levers calibration, the TVM, CCM. Although uh, we know that they're introducing now their, their own vessel control system. Um, they manufacture all their engines, the ECUs, they're mostly manufactured by Continental, some by Bosch. And in this case, Marine, we have the QS family, the QS series, uh, which stands for Quantum Series. Um, 
QIs is an industrial community denomination, which includes obviously marine. Uh, in this case, on marine, we have the B, QSC, B, C, L, and M that goes from smaller to bigger engines. These are the ECMs found on the on the software. Okay, we have uh, CM570. Uh, we have uh, two type of uh, communication protocols, um, 1708 and 1939. Then we have CM850 which is scan 1939 cm 2250 and 2880 which you know from 850 is only 1939 and and we have the models here okay so qsm 1111 5.9 8.3 9 6.7 and 9 again and 5.9 uh, this is the cable we need this is the pinout the cable in our case the power number is the jdc 217 um but as we used to have the other link interface for those users uh, it's the jdc 606 okay so it doesn't matter it's just the connection is different on the link interface side but on the connection port side obviously it's the same one as the nine pin okay so let's go into demo mode and let's show the software okay so we have the four different models Let's go obviously into Inbush. We have 26 different brands. Uh, you can put your favorite brands here. You can always take it out, take it in. Uh, I'm gonna select Cummins, which is the brand. We have all the families, and here we have all the models. So it's QAC 8.3. As you can see, we have different systems. So Jaltes is an all mix, all systems diagnostics tool. It's not just the engine. It's not just that, for, for example, we have port and starboard. We can also have those peripheral systems set before, like the DTS, uh, TVM, CCM, and SIM, okay? This is the gateway, which is necessary because it's different brand, it's Cummins and the SmartCraft technology. So let's get into the engine. We click into the help symbol button, and we have here, for example, how we should connect uh, potential options where you can find the connector, option one, option two, a bigger picture of the, um, the connector, the pinout detail, okay, and the cables we need. As said before, JDC 217. If we don't have the direct connector, we can always click into multi pins. This is a plan B situation. This, this is included in, on the hard cases, okay? And here, for example, it's very simple, same structure, same way of understanding the way of connecting. We have pin C and D, which is C and D. And then we have A and C, which is blue and gray. And then JTP3, we have 10 pair of pins. In this case, we need the JTP3, we need two of them. One on the blue color, the other one on the gray color. And then C, blue is going to C and gray is going to D. We need to apply power supply, you know, we have also a a connector for external power supply inside the hard case, and that's it, we can connect, okay? So that's plan B. You know, Cullens is very common, and most of our customers, they work on diesels, they will have it, but you know, you can have all the brands coming into your shop. You don't have the cable, I still you can get the job done. We are in on the diagnostics menu, we have the different options, for example, read full codes, uh, clear full codes, uh, system data, operation data, live data, actuate component, system checks, parameters, and data recorder. Okay, so let's start with read full codes. And something um, that's uh, very impressive from Jotus is the guided diagnostics. Okay, so you have first, if you have the active full code or not, you have the either the generic or proprietary full codes the number of time you had the situation, even some alarms, if it, we have priority or high priority, and the description of the fault codes. This is where, you know, every tool stops, they don't provide you more information. And as we have the technical information within the software, we're going to relate it at any time. You now those components are related to the fault code. First thing, this is related to the diagnostic size, the free stream data. When we had that last occurrence, date, hour, priority, et cetera. And this is one of the things I like the most from the software because again, the technical information is within the software and we can tell you 
what components are related to the fault code, and even much more than that, we can tell you components, we can tell you the location, and we can tell you also some operational values, okay? Mm -hmm. If you click to display measurements, we're gonna take you to that live data. So again, we're relating diagnostics on the fault code side, then to the technical information, which is here, and it's related to the uh, diagnostics, and then we can relate it again to the live data, which is diagnostics. Um, what else? Diagrams. Now, if you have a full code, that doesn't mean that the component or sensor is damaged. Uh, it can be the wiring or, or anything. Then we provide you the information needed in order to know uh, what, what's the problem, okay? So here, for example, you see the components you have left and right all the components you can always click in show component list and see the complete list of sensors and how it's connected to the ecm okay for example here we know where the communication come from and where the tension come from we click two times and we have here the ecm and here we have the pinout so we exactly know how every sensor is connected to the ECM. Okay, this is the location where the ECM is. Some operational values, again, those measurements related to the ECU. Let's get back to the diagnostics menu. Clear full code, so we can do it here as well. There was a trash symbol, and then we have system data. This is ECU data, what it has been programmed, registered by the manufacturer. Then we have operation data. Okay, so this is super useful um, and especially for those surveyors. We have a lot of customers that are surveyors and pull, pulling up all this information, having inside a report is super important. We have total and partial. The total, we cannot erase it. If it's, if it's a partial data, we can erase it at any time. So here, for example, you see uh, the total data of fuel consumptions, um, others like engine speed, engine load, etc and operation time let's go back and now we can click into data registration okay so here step one we tell you what you're about to do some initial information you have the short term map one short term map two and long term map okay so the the short term map one is the first 500 hours of use uh the map two is the second part of those 500 hours of use and this is the total you know the total um information data registration if we erase or reset the information what we're gonna do is erase the short term uh, map one and map two that can be useful if we change um, the owner but the long term map you know will still remain there we click into check and now for example you know i can take it to long term map and see all this information. Uh, we have the percentage of, of use and depending on the RPMs. And then we have also some other information, engine operation start, you know, indicated engine torque, indicated power, etc. We can do two things. We can extract this as an Excel sheet or we can have it in our diagnostics report. Everything we're doing is being saved on that diagnostics report okay so monitoring that's the um, live data uh, what we can do is click into specific system live data and we are going to be able to see it in three ways again it's being saved on the diagnostics report we have all the measurements available we have 77 in total uh, we have all the groups here and you can select whatever you need in my case i'm just going to select for example, engine oil pressure and full temperature sensor. And then first thing, this has been saved automatically, okay? Here we have the uh, numeric symbol or numeric value. Second, we have the gauges, okay? And remember before when I show you that you can go from those component information to live data, here's the same situation. You can click into the question mark and you can go and have some some information related to that sensor. And last but not least, and very important, we can graph it. Here we have selected just two measurements, but you can put more, you can take it, take them in or out, 
uh, increase the size, decrease, etc. If you have um, enough time re recording, you can just stop it and go back, go back, you know, back and forth. Let's go back. Okay, so now let's go to Actuate Components. Here we can activate, deactivate some uh, components. For example, the EFC solenoid valve or a foil priming pump, intake air heater. Now let's go to the system checks and we have different fun functionalities, okay? So this is very important because some of this, uh, we can do that um, test or that system check and with the result, we can realize that we have a mechanical problem, okay? This is very important because if it's purely mechanical, we're not going to have any full code at all, okay? So for example, we have cylinder cutout, cylinder performance, star motor lockout, full system, test mode on roller bench. I'm going to do a cylinder performance. Okay, so here again is step one, some initial information. We have a cylinder performance, initial conditions, check that the air is no there is no air on the fuel system, revolutions under 900 RPM, the temperature of the engine cool and fluid is equal or higher than 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Important note, there are no limit values indicating the difference between a correct and an incorrect operation in a system. The results are a net to compare values, okay, and et cetera. So this is important because uh, you're always guided. If you want to add your own information, you can click here into the plus sign. You can add the information and anyone at your network is doing a cylinder performance inside a QAC 8.3 engine. They're gonna see our information, but also the information generated by the user. This is very important because if you have, for example, just one Jaltas Marine unit, but you have the software installed in three computers, which is the maximum per Jaltas Marine units, if you're doing anything on your laptop, you can see it from the other one, okay? And if you have two different Jaltas Marine units, for example, you can install it up to six devices. And if you're creating information from one software, from one laptop, it's gonna be accessible for free on the cloud uh, from other computers. Now we'll click check. Those are the initial conditions we meet. We need to meet those initial conditions Otherwise, we won't be able to do this system check. We click, and now step three, uh, we're doing the functionality and we have all the results here. As you can see, the results are shown next. Continue the process when the necessary checks have been carried out. Very simple, that's it. And we have our information. So it's step one, step two, step three. Now let's Let's go to the parameters. We have the idle speed. Here we're gonna do some ECM writings, okay? So we're gonna do a parameter change. So that's why we need the XML code. It's totally free, and you can request it from our website, jaltas.com, in your customer area. Again, step one, what we're about to do, we have this initial information. In order to modify the parameter, you must take into account that a new value to be introduced must be within the upper and lower limit range which is displayed during the parameter settings, okay? So you, you are always guided. Okay, so again, step two, we have the initial conditions and then we can change the RPM. For example, I'm gonna put 700 RPM. That's it, super simple. Modification successfully done and now we have to uh, switch off and we have to wait for 30 seconds. If we want, we can even use this very simple clock. And when we're done with those 30 seconds, we can switch on again and click accept. So you're guided from the beginning to the end. And again, you're recording everything on the diagnostics report. This is very important. Everything is being saved and then you can access the management tool, the GRP, call garage resource planning, and you can access all your diagnosis reports, all your maintenance reports, and you can register them under a specific customer or location, type of vessel, et cetera. As you can see, you can put your login here. You have all your information, uh, the date, start time, close time, user, 
then you can register your information. Everything we have been doing is being saved. Of course, you need to access that functionality, that, that test, in order to get it recorded, okay? We have the data, operation data, everything, okay? We have changed our idle speed. The result is gonna be saved, okay? You can even use this as an invoice if you wish. Okay, and then we have the data recorder. This is very useful for your C trials because you can record it, you can go back to your shop or, well, or even on the on the boat, wherever you want, and you can just click play and see the results. You can select up to 24 measurements and record up to 30 minutes. So if you wanna record one 30 minutes, you have to start a second session, okay? Now we click check and we go to those values, those measurements. Again, we can select up to 24 measurements. I'm just gonna select all inside pressure and temperature and I'm gonna click check. Okay, so now the C trial or the data recording process starts and then we can see we have active flow codes and we can see all the measurements that we have selected. We can see them also as a graph or as, as gauges, okay? If we want to add some comments or some notes, we can always do it. And then when you play that recording, uh, you can go directly to those comments to that specific time and how all those measurements were at the same that same time. When you're done, you can click into the cross sign and that's it. You can click either, uh, click either accept or cancel. Even if you click cancel, it's gonna be saved in your laptop and I'm gonna click accept so I can show you the results. Very important, you can export uh, the reports on Excel sheet, you can. Uh, can you uh, export your information of your data recording on an Excel sheet? You can, but it's very important. You need to save the diagnostics report of that same session of that data recording. Otherwise, you won't be able to generate the data recording on Excel sheet, okay? Okay, so let's click into play. And you can be at your shop or you know maybe another day and you can see okay in the minute five second 30 you have all those flow codes have all that guided diagnostics related remember all that technical information related the system data and also all those measurements uh, you can always click here and you go directly to your comment uh, comment one you have notes uh, i put notes one and that's it super simple but it's super super useful especially for uh, our surveyors uh, customers because you know they need to check the performance of those vessels okay so now let's get out and what i'm going to do is show you the technical information again it's within the software and we are allowed to outperform most of the oem tools because it's within the software okay it's not in an external platform okay so for example components okay so here where do we get all those information that are related to the focus from here? System technical data and components. And again, we're able to do it because it's inside the software. We're relating diagnostics and technical information, you know, at every time. And also you can relate technical information and the management tool or diagnostics management tool or diagnostics and customer support. Okay, you have some general information, some tanning torques. Okay, so that's uh, from the system system technical data diagrams i've already shown that to you the same thing you don't need to have an active focal in order to access those diagrams maintenance data this is the other report that we can generate i have to highlight that all this information is um is taken from the official manuals but we put the most information part the more relevant in a similar structure okay so if you are um, using today comments, but then uh, um, MAN or MTU, you are going to find the information on the same place, even though the information is going to be different. Okay, okay. So maintenance data, for example, we can do our one-year uh, service or uh, six months, uh, etc. Depending also the hour, and we tell you exactly what task should be done um and it's taken from the official manuals okay you can always add some notes here if you want okay 
and you can even customize your own uh, maintenance guide again we have a plus sign the blue plus sign means that we can customize our information we can add our service i just made out this uh, in the past i can also select it and i can see that in a report so that's useful because if you want to have a nice clean report uh, with all your information even the one that's customized by you you can do it same structure your logo information about your company user time date customer vessel and all the tasks we have performed okay even the one that has been customized by the customer okay okay now technical data okay again this is much more than a diagnostics tool and we have a lot of technical information so that's uh one of the things that our customers like the most okay so we have different information like specifications you know fuel system uh, oversupply lubrication you know cooling systems you know it's like information that's important that's uh relevant but i would say i would highlight those three parts for example the tiny torques okay the crankshaft the connecting road the cylinder head we tell you exactly the order and right now it's you have to apply uh, force in other cases it's force and angle we will tell you that information for example we have here different stages okay super super useful adjustments and tolerance for example for the valve adjustments you have the information liquid capacity and quality okay for example of the cooling system fluid you have the capacity okay so this is very useful it's not diagnostics but it's part of the uh, technician journey and we need all this information and we have a lot of uh, a lot of engineers working on the development that they only work on the technical information this is very important we have um, 200 engineers separated in different departments with different objectives and then we have different types of engineers that work in different aspects so that's we're very serious on that okay and then troubleshooting and symptoms we have over 23,000 troubleshooting guides uh, in up to the 90 percent of all the all the fall codes and, and systems okay so um here you have all the information your steps and if you want to customize again your own troubleshooting as you can because you can you see here your blue plus sign okay well we're done with um with the inboard side and let's go again to the powerpoint and the smart craft it's also part of the inboard because a lot of Cummins engines they use it uh, although we have seen that you know little by little um, Cummins is introducing their own technology but it's very important to highlight this uh, it's not just the engine it's also the other systems as well as all systems at the DTS, the digital throttle and shift, the TVM, you know, for the thrust vector model, the joystick, the CCM, you have the diagnostics of the levers, and the SIM, again, because it's a different brand and we need that gateway, okay? Uh, here we have, um, uh, for example, um, a typical ECM from them with G3 CAM communication protocol. And this is the pinout, and this is the cable we need. Okay, it's the JDC 617. Okay, then um, uh, we have also some other uh, ECMs that can be found. It would depend on the system that we have, and they're all manufactured, you know, either by Woodward or by Motorola. Okay, so very simple, very quick. Let's go back into the inboard again we go to comments we're on the qoc 8.3 and let's do an example with the dts okay very simple process you click here you know the cables you need and you click connect you will also have that multi pins plan b um pin out okay but if we have the the direct connector uh it's a jdc 617 now here you don't have diagnostics obviously it's just the calibration you click into calibration to the dts and again we need to accept the extra mode code conditions why because we are going to write on the ecm we're going to do a calibration as we said before step one what we're about to do that initial information super useful 
that's part also of the Gallia Diagnostics technical information. It's very useful to get the job done and don't need assistance. But anyway, if you need assistance at any time, although I'm going to repeat that at the end, you can always contact us by phone, by email, and we can also do remote assistance, OK? So step one, what we are about to do, we click, and now we start the configuration, OK? Because we have configuration, then we have adaptation. Initial conditions, the engine must be stopped. And now we see the initial mapping. Um, if we have different helms, uh, we can go previous, next, and very important here, uh, obviously the engine location, the lever type, and the polarity, okay? Let's click check. And now we can select, you know, the different things, you know. Um, for example, you say we have two engines. We click just, then we have number of fems. I will just select one. I will click check. And now you have make sure all the control levers are in neutral position. Okay. Now we click check when it has been done. And we start the process, the process. Okay. So it's move the control lever to reverse position, reverse wide open throttle. Okay. And then we click to yeah, uh, to check. Okay, now again, depending on helm, engine, all that, uh, reverse wide open throttle. Now again, into neutral position. And now we have to save the new vessel configuration. We have to wait, we turn the key off, uh, put the levers into the reverse wide open throttle position and then wait until the system is off. You can always use the clock as well and wait for 10 seconds. We have waited for 10 seconds. You can switch on again, put everything in neutral position, and then click check. As you can see, everything is explained. So you cannot get lost, OK? If you do something wrong, you will have to start the process again. But if you do everything right, it works very, very good. Okay, now we start the adaptation process, initial conditions, the engine must be stopped. We click again, now we have to select, either we start with the port or starboard. We select the type of uh, levers. If we have doubts, we can over click into the question mark and we can see here the different type of levers. The most typical one is the, is the type two, okay? I will select the type two check and now this is important we need to know the polarity okay i will click normal okay and now move the control lever to the indicated positions and continue with the calibration okay so it's maybe neutral forward for forward wide open throttle forward neutral reverse reverse wide open throttle you have to follow this all the time depending on, you know, it's reverse, wide open throttle, neutral, et cetera. Okay, so now we have finished with the configuration of that port engine, same thing, switch off, everything in reverse wide open throttle. Uh, we wait for 10 seconds, again, we switch, switch on again, and then we put everything in neutral position. And then we click check and we start again with the starboard. I'm not going to do it again because it's the same process, but as you have seen, this is an advanced functionality. It's part of the Cummins uh, yachts and boats. You can do it with Jaltus Marine. It's very simple to do it. Everything is explained. It's just step by step. Okay. So now let's go back to the main menu. And we can continue with the core point right now with the last part, the stationary engines. Okay, it's mostly diesel, also, although we have some gas engines. Okay, what can we say about this? Stationary engines, they have different users. Uh, the most common ones uh, is the gensets. Um, then, for example, you can have compressors, hydraulic pumps, water pumps etc okay so what we cover is the stationary engines although we're introducing also the uh, electric generation system inside this model okay but we need to know that it's stationary engine sometimes we have 
a brand like, for example, Onan, uh, they don't manufacture the engines. We need to know what's the engine inside in order to do our diagnostics. Uh, well, other engines, as before, they're manufactured by Cummins and the ECMs mostly by Continental. I think Bosch, they also do something, okay, but mostly Continental. Okay, so we have different families or series uh, inside stationary engines. We have Select, Sentinel, and Sentry, which are the, the oldest models. Then we have QS and IS, okay? QS, again, is the industrial denomination, which is being discontinued right now. You will find uh, the family called only B or F or L or X, okay? Uh, we also have the gas uh, systems and then IS, although it's a truck family or series, uh, you can find some of them in a highway engines. Very important. So here we have our after treatment regulation. Unfortunately, on the inboard side, we don't have it yet, hopefully very soon, and depending on the engine, on the year, on the power, um, they are meeting the requirements for the different tiers, okay? Uh, we cover from the tier one to tier five. Uh, we have here the, well, this is the maximum limit combustion gases emissions. And again, it only applies inside Jaldas Marine on the stationary engine side, okay? Uh, very important, um, we have here, this is something um, uh, approximate, okay? So it's more or less select Sentinel Sentry is tier one. The QS is from tier two. Same thing with IS, you have from tier two systems, gas from tier one, a BFL from tier four, and then X, although they're new and they're in the biggest engines, you can find them uh, from tier two, okay? Different ECMs. This is we cover more than those ECMs, but I couldn't I couldn't fit all of them. I I put uh, some of them. Uh, some things to highlight, for example, on the um, on the communication protocol side, uh, we have um, until 850. We can find 1708. Okay, you can have. For the same type of ECM, different systems, some are communication protocol 1708, others 1939, but you won't find any 1708 above 850, okay, as we can see with the communication protocols. Also, although it's not always that way, but in general, if we have a higher CM number, also the tiers are usually uh, higher, okay, they're meeting. Uh, more restricted after treatment regulation. Okay, now we have the different connections that we can find here, uh, nine pin again, and then we have the OBD cable and also the backbone cable. Okay, so let's go into demo time. This is the last demo we're doing. Now let's click into stationary engines. Now let's click into comments. Now we have all the families, as I said before, and then we have all the models, okay? Let's click something, you know, new and big, the X15. As I said before, right now QS, you won't find it anymore. You know, with all those QSB, CF, and so on, you will only find the last letter. Let's go into the X, X15. This is their own uh, common rail technology, the extra high pressure injection from Cummins, and we can click connect. As we have different connectors, it asks us to select the cables we're using, the cable we're using, this is very important, otherwise it won't work. And now we're accessing the diagnostics menu. Okay, now we see more functionalities or more menus than before on inboard. It's normal, it's a more technological engine. You know, we have more uh, functionalities as well. Read full codes. Okay, again, same structure. If we have an active or non-active full code, we have our proprietary or generic full code. The number of times we had that situation, if we have an alarm priority and the description. Okay, for example, let's select the NOx sensor behind the SCR catalyst, incorrect data, data drifted high. What options do we have? First, free stream data, this is related to the diagnostic side, and then again, 
held in components of the fault component related to the fault code, see information about the component, and we have again super useful an image of the component at the location, pinouts, and operational values, also tanning torques, etc. Super, super useful. If we click into the diagram symbol, we're going to go again to the diagrams and we're going to know how that sensor is connected to the ECM. And left and right, we have the components. Here we have our sensor and how it's connected to the ECM. We can double click, same structure. You know, we have here X1 and X2, the different sockets, the pinouts, and location and operational values. What else do we have? We have all the guided diagnostics, okay, the component, that's um, the the component where we have that full code, uh, code, number of times we have that situation, component related, images, location, operational values, one diagrams, and also potential solutions. So this is the full code troubleshooting. I showed you before the troubleshooting by symptoms, and this is the troubleshooting by full code. So it's related to that electronic situation. And we have all those steps uh, and uh, all that, you know, potential uh, solutions. Okay, so we have seen different, I'm not gonna show the live measurements again. Uh, let's click into operation data. We have shown the data report in the engine operation data, but here we have other two options, engine abuse data. Okay. This is important, you know, for example, related to engine speed, coolant temperature, intake air temperature, engine oil temperature, engine oil pressures, uh, the total engine operation times, and we can know how long we have been in those situations and depending on the severity. Mm -hmm. Same thing with um, after treatment data records, again, operation data, in this case, related to the after treatment, for example, last regenerations, we will do afterwards an example with the region. We can know all the previous uh, regions, super useful. Again, we can export that on Excel sheet or we can access our diagnostics report. Okay, so um, let's access to the actual component side. Here we have the EFC solenoid valve, fan activation and fuel priming pump. Then we have the system checks. We have the different system checks. Cylinder code add fuel system, VGT actuator, evaluation of the injector, and, and so on. Parameters. Okay, we have a huge list of parameters that we can change. Again, for this, we need the expert mode code. It's totally free. You can request in your customer area. And we have created this for more security. Sometimes on the shops, um, we have technicians that are not too versed on, on some brands or in, in general on the diagnostics or mechanical side. So their superior can control, they can access those advanced functionalities. Let's click into maintenance. Very important. We have here injector reset, the region, and other type of maintenance functionalities. Let's do an example with the region. I'm going to click accept. Again, step one, we're about to do. Step one, we click check. We have then step two, initial conditions. We need to meet those conditions. And then we click check and we're going to start a process. We can even graph this, and we'll have the results. You know, depending on the type of engine, you can go from you normally between 40 minutes, one hour, one hour, or even more. Okay, we can even display the results, and everything is being saved inside the diagnostics report. 
Okay, so calibration, we can do the VGT initial installation or calibration. And when we have configuration, it's for the password management. And last, although I'm not gonna show it again because I already did before, is the data recorder, okay? Before we finish with this, I want to show you real quick uh, the GRP, which is the garage resource planning. This is a management tool where you can create your customer list, your vessel list, access all your reports. You can create the different user IDs if you have different technicians or different employees. Um, you can do reception forms, assign work orders. This is a complete management tool, super useful. Nobody in the on the diagnostic industry does this. We do, and it's inside the software, so it's, it's very, very, very useful. We can create the different, um, different customers with their contact information, uh, people that work on that company, all the vessels they have, you know, you can access all your reports, super, uh, useful uh, is when you're creating a report, uh, save it under a specific vessel or plate or cell number or customer, etc. Because if we have hundreds or thousands of reports after a year or or several years, if you don't have this information, it's going to be very difficult to filter that information. Yeah, you have the name of the report and the and the date, but it's not enough. Okay, and that's why it's highly recommendable so you can create all this workshop management here you have the status all your orders uh, priorities you can assign this to different users so it's super super useful and again it's inside the software so you can relay those diagnostic reports directly with your management tool and everything is being saved for free on the cloud okay here as you can see you have different type of users depending on the type of users we have five of them you have more or less restrictions and rights, okay? And well, again, uh, customer support, it's super important by phone, by email, and also we can do a remote assistance. We can remote in your computer and help you out. Okay, so just to finish, very, very quick additional information. Uh, at the moment, we have 70 brands, although we're gonna have our uh, next uh, version in about one month and we're gonna add several brands more. We have um, approximately 1,300 models. We have more or less 3,500 systems, 3,200 diagrams, over 23,000 troubleshooting by symptoms. So it's very impressive. And we are having our updates every four months. We're very strict on that. It's not having updates when we want. No, it's we have every four months, we need to have new brands, new models, new technical information, uh, new functionalities, new everything. Yes. So you can see uh, an evolution. Here you can see it. So this is a, we're comparing just like one year and a half more or less. Um, and you can see that impress impressive um, updates, okay? On the brand side, but also on the models, systems, diagrams, and troubleshooting guides. And it's always gonna be the same thing. If you have been using our tool, for several years, you're gonna see an impressive uh, difference. Um, if we compare the tool today from the one we're gonna have next year and two years also gonna be very, very, very impressive. So that's why I always say that um, you are um, not buying just a tool, you know, you are getting up into the project because we're in constant development. Well, we always say we had an award uh, on the IBEX show. Um, although it's more related to the recreational side, but well, you can find comments on the recreational side too. Uh, we had a um, award on our category, so it's always good to have that recognition. And to finish, what is Jotus Marine equipment? We have the hardware with the link interface, with the multi-pins, uh, the OBD2 cable, uh, your USB cable as well, uh, although you can also use the Bluetooth. And then we have software and license. As I said before, we have different configurations, okay? You don't have to go uh, all the way to the full software. You can go only outboard, only inboard, only jet ski, or inboard plus outboard. Uh, then we have the yearly license, although this is not mandatory, but obviously if you don't have the license, you won't get the updates. 
but the auto diagnostics functionalities remain there. And then, well, we have optionals like the computer and all the direct connectors. As we have almost 60 different cables, you know, customers, they have different needs, so they can customize and buy the cable kits they, they need, okay? Windows-based, okay, either laptop or, or tablet. And, you know, it's our uh, business model is our approach. It's all makes all systems diagnostics tool. Instead of having multiple licenses or different expiration dates and different link interfaces or different computers because you cannot install two different or three different diagnostics software on the same computer, it's much better to have just one tool and because you're allowed to do pretty much everything with only one license expiration date and everything and you can target different potential customers everybody that's related to the maintenance we have end users like for example mega yes with all the chief engineers we have a lot of inger chief engineers using our tool independent technicians uh, offshore services also on the government side military side dealers as well they can see this as a second tool or as a first tool for those brands they don't represent. Also shipyards and service concession contracts. So pretty much everybody that's uh, involved in the diagnostic side on the or the maintenance side. Customer support, again, we have to highlight it. We're very serious about this. Um, we are available from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern hour from Monday to Friday, phone, email, and also uh, remote assistance. And again, um why Jotus Marine? As you can see, uh, we are the, um, you know, by a huge difference, the best aftermarket solution for Cummins, both inboard and uh, station engines, although we have also a huge coverage. We have 70 brands. All makes all systems in one tool. You have seen it's very, very easy to use, very intuitive. One software layout and structure for everyone. Same thing. Same way of understanding the diagnostics, where you find things, the technical information, and those are step ones uh, that I've all mentioned all the time, though, with the initial information before doing a task. We're also very active on the training and e-learning side with the uh, Jotus University. Um, we have courses also, everything that we're doing, uh, webinars and vlogs also part of the Jotus University. Again, it's not a summer love. Uh, we have been here for 20 years. Not the company, the company 30 years, but the diagnostics project 20 years. Uh, pretty much is the systems are electronics. All those extra features that put us in another level, like the management tool, um, the technical information, customer support. We have flexible license, okay? On the customization, on the models that we have, but also if you want to renew or not, wireless connection with the Bluetooth, you know, Again, troubleshootings, taking information and all that, super useful, it's not diagnostics, and that's why we're more than just a diagnostics tool. And that's it, so thank you, thank you very much. I don't know if you have uh, any questions, uh, otherwise you know our contact information, uh, either by phone or, or email, we're here to help you. Or well, if you didn't see this video in our YouTube channel or Facebook, you can always put a comment. Well, I believe nobody has any question. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for being here. Um, or even if you watch this webinar afterwards, uh, it's going to be on our, on our social media platforms, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much.